Hi, today's video is going to be standing up. I tried to return to my old original gym routine that I had prior to tearing my quadricep and yeah, not, not time yet. Uh, so when I sit down and get back up, it is incredibly uncomfortable. So I've decided to stand until further notice or until I'm too tired to stand and must go to sleep. And when that happens, I will roll myself out of bed, crawl downstairs and make my way to work tomorrow, whichever way I need to. So today I'm not sure if most of you even remember this, but I used to do videos in my apartment where I was standing up. And around the end of 2016, I stopped doing that because as you can see in the video like the one I have above, it was incredibly painful for me. I tore my quadricep that year. I was crossing the street. The light was green for me. And one of those Arrow 7 bikes, you know, the standard issue DoorDash, seamless Grubhub driver bike, is one of the bikes coming down the road and it's trying to go through the red light. It's speeding up even though I'm crossing the street and the light is green for me. And he hits me with the bike. That was probably caused me a bruise or a black and blue. And that bruise turned into a tear when he threw the food at me on the bike, cursed me out, and I felt the need to, to chase him and, well you know, send the message that if you hit somebody with a bike at 30 miles an hour, you probably shouldn't throw food at them or they will chase you and toss you off your fucking Arrow 7. Now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm honestly not proud of the fact that I did that. And I'm even less proud of the fact that three years later, if that th happened, I'd, knowing the consequences, I'd probably do the exact same thing. But it, it wound up resulting in a torn quadricep and it was very painful. So I went to a doctor and the doctor said I would probably have issues walking and I would also shouldn't lift weights anymore. I probably wouldn't be able to lift weights again. He referred me to a surgeon. I go see the surgeon and the surgeon says, if I don't have surgery, not only am I going to be walking awkwardly for the rest of my life and limping, I can never lift weights again. And I was very concerned about this because I would try to do a squat even with just a bar and it was impossible. It was too painful. It was My leg was too weak. It just nothing worked. It sucked. I felt like I had a kickstand attached to me. And before I could even get into asking about credentials or price, this guy, he's, he's like the caricature of a used car salesman. He starts trying to sell me on why he's worth more money than all the other surgeons that I may have gone to. And he's naming them and saying what it is they're going to tell me and why it is that he's better. And he's telling me all the re you know he's he's bringing up price because he knows that I didn't have insurance at the time and he's bringing up the all, all the the days that he would have available not asking me when I'm free what my time frame is or even if I want to go ahead with surgery for you or if I have any questions as a patient but just you know here's the days that I I may be able to fit somebody like you in so you know you 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 can clear your schedule accordingly kind of. it was it was a disgusting experience that I would have never expected from a doctor the experience made me absolutely disgusted with the entire process I thought I was a patient walking into a room where I was going to get solid medical advice and I wound up walking into a room with a high pressure insurance timeshare salesman. It, it sucked and it disgusted me to the entire experience. So I left. I just, you know, I, I did what, what, what a lot of people sadly do, which is I have a really terrible problem that I don't know how to solve. Let's just ignore it and hope it goes away. And it didn't go away. It got worse with time. I'd like to go back to that surgeon's office and I would like to share the video clip I'm about to share with you. Uh, with him and ask him any any would you like to explain what you told me three years ago to this clip so he was very very adamant that if I did not listen to him and I did not go to him specifically as a surgeon that I would not be able to lift weights again ever and I would not be able to walk properly Let's see if that's true within the context of what I did about 12 hours ago. Now, just a disclaimer, to be clear, I am not a power lifter. I am not a bodybuilder. I do not have the best form. I am not a strong guy. But, you know, I, 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 re I didn't get my hips through as often as I should have. You're supposed to, you know, get your hips through earlier, and I'm sure this isn't the best form. But, you know, somebody did tell me I'd never lift weights again for the rest of my life. And it's really cool to see that three years later, that's, let's see, two, 245s, 225s. Yeah, so that, that's 325 pounds. And it appears that I managed to disprove that surgeon six times. So long story short, if you have somebody who is a high pressure salesperson type giving you any sort of information or advice, just consult with other people get multiple opinions all the time. Whether it's someone saying that you need to pay for their high-priced surgical options that are not covered by most insurances in order to be able to walk properly and lift weights again, and that they're the only chance you have at lifting weights again, or whether it's somebody saying that you need to spend $20,000 to change the usage of a space that you're renting to something else before you could do anything else. 
get a second opinion, get a third opinion, get a fourth opinion if you have to, before you get screwed over by charlatans. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.